Our call to worship comes from Psalm 50. I'm reading verse 1, and then I'm reading verses 4 to 6. The Mighty One, God, the Lord, speaks and summonses the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. He summonses the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me his consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for he is a God of justice. Good morning, everybody. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I wish to welcome you to our service today. I truly hope and trust and pray that God will touch you through this service today and that you will really feel God holding you in his arms today as we become silent and we praise and we worship God, who is our God, our Heavenly Father. But before we get started, may I inquire on how you are doing? Are you still coping? Are you still with us? You know, if you are not coping and if things are not going well, please feel free to call the church at any time. Speak to me, speak to Derek, speak to Marion, speak to Anthony or Angela, any one of our leaders in the church. We are all capable of trying to help you. So please, it's an open invitation. Call us. Let us see if we can help you in whichever way. For the people at Church on Tin, I just have one or two announcements today. Please take note that next week, the 14th of August, is our annual general meeting. Please come and join us. That is where we discuss the business of the church and we look at the way forward. And if you have any wonderful ideas, please come and share them with us and we can take a look at them. Then, of course, as you know, we've, our church's name has changed. But we want to do it officially, and uh, we have invited Professor Jerry Pillay, who is currently the Dean of the Faculty of Theology at University of Pretoria. He will be here on the 25th of September. Um, then we will ask him to come and preach for us, and we will have a festive day. So please make a note in your diary, and please come and join us. We would love to have you yeah, with us as we join together on that celebratory date, 25 September, 9 o'clock, yeah, at the church. So let us continue to do what we came to do, to praise, to worship, and to learn. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, and I'm reading chapter 1, verse 1. And then I jump to verse 10 to 20. The reading is rather long, so I beg you to please bear with me as we read. Isaiah 1, verse 1, and then going to verse 10, right through to 20. Hear the word of God. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reign of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, king of Judah, a rebellious nation. Hear the word of the Lord. You rulers of Sodom, listen to the instruction of our God. You people of Gomorrah, the multitude of your sacrifice, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams and the fat of fattened animals, I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals. I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, 
I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like a scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. May the Lord bless his holy word to us today. Please join me as we come before the Lord in prayer. Come let us pray. O oh, Almighty God and Heavenly Father, Lord. O oh, Lord, we celebrate this wonderful day, Lord, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Yes, Lord, we know that you sent him to die on a cross for each and every one of us so that we may be set free and that once again we could be united, united with one another and united with you. O oh Lord, as we come this morning and we approach your eternal throne, we want to proclaim your majesty. We want to proclaim, Lord, that you are the God of gods and the Lord of lords. And it is to you that we bow our heads and bend our knees. So, Lord, as we come this morning, we proclaim that you are almighty and that you are our God, that you are our heavenly Father. But, Lord, as we come, we know that in a week gone by we have hurt you, we have sinned against you. And, yes, Lord, we need to come clean once again. So, Lord, in our silence now, we just want to offer you our personal and individual confessions. Hear our hearts right now, Lord. Oh dear Lord God, we've emptied our hearts before you, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you will remove our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. But Lord, we know that we can trust you to do this because you've promised us, Lord, and you've assured us that if we do repent and turn from our wicked ways, you will forgive us. We proclaim that today, Lord, and we go into a world knowing that we are not perfect, but that we are forgiven, Lord. Oh Lord, what an honor and a privilege it is to come to you directly with our, our sins, Lord, and, and ask for atonement. Oh Lord, you love us so much that you do forgive us. And Lord, we proclaim that today. Oh Lord, we thank you for today that we can gather as your children before you. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come and we can worship you and that we can learn from you, Lord. And that we can just be in your presence, Lord, wherever we may be. Because we know that you are omnipresent. So, Lord, as we gather today with our service, we just pray that you will hold us tightly. Embrace us with your love, Lord. Bring a calm upon us, each and every one, Lord. And, Lord, help us to hear your word today. And, Lord, as I bring your message to these, your people, I pray that you will take control of me. And that each and every word that flows from my mouth will be your words, Lord. And that those words will bring honor and glory at all times. So, Lord, we pray. Be with us now. Hold us. Teach us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading the first three verses. Then I'm jumping to verse 8 to 16. Hear the letter sent to the Hebrews. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command 
so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so, from this one man, and he as a good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been looking of of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, as for he has prepared a city for them. I read only thus far. I have already mentioned many a time that I work from a lectionary. And the reason I do that is because the lectionary takes you on a journey throughout the whole Bible over a period of time. But as we journey through this and we look at these different texts that the lectionary takes us, it takes us to some very uneasy reading material. And one of those is the one from the one we read in the Old Testament from Isaiah chapter 1. And it is a very, very nasty piece of passage. And you read through it and you see how God has actually expressed his disappointment with his people. After everything he's done for them, they still go and they stab him in the back. They desert him. They are not faithful to him. And Israel turns away from him. So, what has that got to do with us? Well, I want us just to think for a little while. And I want to ask you this question like I, I always like doing. Is what does worship mean to you? You know, as a minister in being in various churches and working with various laity, I must say to you, I don't know if we really and truly understand what worship is. You know, in the Old Testament, the people used to express their worship by means of a sacrifice. Sacrificing the fattened calf or the, the calf without blemish or the goat or whatever they would have that was without blemish. And what that would do is, is they would transfer their sins onto this animal and this animal will be sacrificed to God at his temple. And this could only be done by the high priest, the rabbi. But with Jesus, things have changed. We don't have to do a sacrifice anymore with an animal or transfer our sins onto an animal because Jesus became the sacrificial lamb. In other words, Jesus was without blemish when he went to the cross. And when he went to the cross, he voluntarily took our sins upon himself and then sacrificed himself in our place. So, 
You see, the sacrifice we have to make is to sacrifice our hearts. Now, please, I don't mean this literally cutting your heart out of your body and putting it on an altar. I don't mean that. But it is giving our hearts to God. Proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior and trusting in Him. And this brings me back. Our worship is exactly that. He's coming to church on a Sunday or coming to this service on a Sunday or whenever we listen to this. And with our hearts committed to God, we then praise Him, we pray to Him, and we hear His word to us. Now, moving around in the laity with the churches of various people, and please, I'm not necessarily referring just to Church on Tin, but there are people in Church on Tin, and they were in Kimberley, and they were in Cryfontaine, and they all over dispersed the country. But when I listen to how people become anxious about the church, and I ask them, what is it about the church that worries you? I would get responses like, oh, I don't like the music. Oh, I don't like that person's way of preaching. Oh, I don't like that person who is a sinner coming into our church. And so we continue how people express what they do not like in church. Did you hear God's words to Isaiah about that? He says, your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me and I am weary of bearing them. And when you spread your hands in the air, in prayer. Wow, need I continue? And why is this? Why do you think God responds to Israel in this manner? And the reason being is, is when we come to praise and worship God, it might, becomes all about us. It's not about God. It's about us. It's about me, what I like, what I want, and nothing about what God wants and whether my worship and praise is acceptable to God. Just think of it. I don't want to come to church because so-and-so is preaching. It's not about the person who's preaching. And it's not about whether you like him. But it's about that person is bringing God's message to you. And our worship is humbling ourselves to be receptive to what that person is saying or bringing to us. That is why. That is why God became so disappointed and disillusioned with Israel. So now you see, folks, I then also have to start questioning and saying, why is it that we are battling really battling to give our hearts to God. Why do we battle to commit? And there's only one reason I can really think of, and that is that we, we don't really believe in God. We don't really believe in Jesus. We go through all the motions. We go through everything that is there. To be part of We've come through COVID. Oh, yes, a hundred thousand people died. But you know what? We are still here. And have you thanked him for that?
reason I say this, and I want you to learn this word. I have mentioned it before, but I want you to learn it again. We serve a practical God. And when I say practical, it is spelled P R A X I C A L. Isn't in our lives. He all the time, no matter what. He understands our situations. He understands what we're going through, and he knows exactly what it is that you need. And the greatest of all is, is that he says, Paul, in Paul's letter uh, that is written to Hebrews, it says, Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So in other words, God says he is our The question is, is do we believe that? And do we allow him to take care of us? Because we, we say to God, God, I want you to do this for me. But you know, God, you must do it this way, this way, and this way because I know better than you, God. And as soon as we start adopting that attitude, it means we don't really recognize God for who he is, how great he is. We sang that song just now, How Great Is Our God. How, what a wonderful song it is. And then sings my soul, how great thou art. But yet, we don't respond in a manner that we truly believe how great and how wonderful our God is. I mean, need we just look at, at Abraham when he had to sacrifice his son? Would you do that? Would you go and put him on a son and put Isaac on, on an altar? Or, yeah, God calls Abraham and he says, Abraham, I want to send you. And you know what Abraham does? Because he's committed, he doesn't even know where he's going. He goes. And God leads him. God works with him. And God takes him from him. And then, of course, there's Sarah. Now, can you imagine Sarah being in her old age, 90 years plus, and an angel, and God says to her, Sarah, you're going to become pregnant, and with your son, whoo, I'm going to, there's going to be descendants, and your, it's going to be descendants all the way through. Uncountable amount of descendants. I think Sarah must have laughed at him. I can just see the reaction. I mean, if I had to ask some of the older people around and say, hey, how do you feel about falling pregnant? They'll say to me, John, get real. There is no way I can fall pregnant. But if you really wanted to, and you allowed God to do that and trusted God, that can happen. Because God is the only giver of life. He's also the only taker of life. But there's, there's something else, and it's my third point I have to add to this. It says faith is to hope in something that we cannot see. Now, why do you think God would do this? Now, I don't know how many of you have ever lived down by the sea. And yes, I had the privilege of staying in Somerset West, which is... A stone throw away from the strand and every morning I used to drop Rita off at work and from there I would drive down to the beach uh, in the strand and there right next to the sea in my car I would go and sit and watch the waves and I would have my quiet time with God. But eventually what used to be every day became every second day, every third day, once a week, 
once a month, once every three months. And eventually it reached a point where I hardly ever went to the sea. You see, the novelty had worn off. Now my question to you, if Jesus had to be walking around with us today, how much of his novelty would wear off? And how much hope will we be putting in him when we see him every day and live every day? And that is why I believe that our hope Our hope is in Jesus Christ in a future that is still to come. Now, that does not mean that Jesus is not going to help us through the life that we are currently living in, the life that we are now busy with on earth. No, it doesn't mean Jesus is not going to help us. He is going to help us. But our reward, our hope, is in the life that is still to come. But for us to get to that life is we have to believe in Jesus. So that when we do come to church, we display our humility in hoping and praying that our worship is acceptable to God. Not about the sensory things that we experience on earth. I don't like that song. I don't like that preacher. I don't like that. But we turn it away from us and we all make it about God. God, is the song that I'm singing acceptable to you? God, is this message I'm listening today your message that you want me to hear? No matter who is delivering that message, it's not about us but it's about God. You know, the most wonderful thing is, is that faith is a spiritual gift that God has given to us. He is the one that's given us the ability to have faith. And then what he says, I've given you faith. All you must do is trust me. Commit to me and trust me and walk with me. And that when you praise me, you acknowledge my almightiness. You acknowledge that I'm omniscient. You acknowledge that I'm ever-present. And you acknowledge that I'm part and parcel of you every day. And that I, I'm not an abstract God who's sitting in heaven miles away from you. But I'm ever-present. I'm where you are. I know your situation and I know what it is that you're going through. Just like Abraham. Just like Isaac, just like Jacob, just like Sarah. That is how we need to respond to God. To give him all the honor and the glory and to trust him. Because he has given us that ability. You've heard that saying that says, less of me but more of God. Now today I challenge you to make your life more of God and less of you. And just see what happens. Allow God to take you. Allow God to walk with you. Trust him. I mean, he is the one that created you. Amen. Come let us pray together. Oh dear Lord God, we've heard your word to us today, Lord. And yes, Lord, we must confess that we do not trust you as we ought to, Lord. But Lord... Maybe because it's past our seeing and therefore we don't, we don't trust it that much, Lord. And we are people that like to be convinced. And as soon as it comes to issues of faith, Lord, we, we are inclined to shy away from it, Lord. And therefore, Lord, we need your help. That you may hold us very tightly and, and just show to us, Lord, that we can trust you. And that we need not fear because you are in control. Oh Lord, we know that you are with us 24-7 and we know that you lead us and that you guide us. But Lord, help us to put all our trust in you because you've given us that gift of faith, Lord. 
Lord, help us to use it so that we can truly grow, grow in our faith with you, in our relationship with you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. We thank you that we can put all our trust and faith in you, Lord, so that when we come to church on a Sunday or when we pray, Lord, or when we raise our arms to you, it will not be futile, Lord, but it would be genuine worship, genuine praise, genuinely acknowledging who you are and what you are. So, Lord, we pray that you will help us with this. And we thank you, Lord, that you are so patient with us, Lord, because no matter what we do, how long we take, Lord, you are always waiting for us, waiting for us to turn back to you. So, Lord, we want to pray this today in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Folks, that brings us to the end of yet another service. It's been an honor and a privilege to share God's word with you today. And I truly hope and trust and pray that you will take heart from it. So receive now the blessing. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us here now today and forevermore. Amen. Folks, may God bless you through the week that lies ahead. Please just reach out to him, walk with him, give him all your burdens, and he will take care of you. So until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, and always remember that Jesus is only a prayer way. Goodbye now.